My next guest takes on High Annie Barcelos at RFA 36 on March 4th. Landon Venata joins me here on the program for the very first time. Landon, how are you? I'm doing great. Doing great. <laughs> Good stuff. First time I've had a guest wave. I definitely appreciate that. That's nice. <laughs> you know? Hello. Yeah, saying hi to the world out here. And uh, Landon... Landon, uh, before uh, you know, we, we talk about your upcoming fight here. Uh, for those who aren't familiar with your backstory, you know, how did you get involved in MMA? Uh, well, originally started. I watched um, UFC 30, UFC 31. It was Ortiz versus Tanner. Got hooked right away. Um, started watching the tapes every single day until I found a place to train when I was 13. Did a little bit of grappling for a couple of years. Started wrestling my sophomore year in high school. Uh, did nothing but wrestle. Throughout high school uh, and a semester at Chattanooga, Tennessee, a D1 college out there. Hated college, dropped out, moved to Jackson's a month later, been here for the past five years. Now, I was, I was looking at your record here, and I saw in your uh, fourth pro fight, you fought for Pancrase uh, up in Japan. And uh, you fought a guy by the name of uh, Mitsuyoshi Nikai. Uh, you beat him by first-round submission. What was that experience like so early on in your career, being able to fight in Japan? Because a lot of fighters, I know that's kind of on their bucket list. Uh, it was yeah, absolutely incredible. At first, they didn't want to take the fight, and then they couldn't find somebody else, so we ended up taking it. It was at uh, welterweight, that fight. So it was pretty great. I got to go over there the night before weigh-ins. I was eating sushi, enjoying the nightlife, hanging out. Um, I didn't have to cut any weight at all, which was beautiful. Um, yeah, it was just a great experience. The, the crowd, we fought at Differ Rocky Arena, and the crowd was just extremely polite, quiet, applauding at the right moments, being quiet at the right moments, you know. Um, it's a very, very unique experience and definitely something a treasure. Yeah, and I was going to say, everything I've heard about uh, you know competing in Japan, just the, the level of respect that the fans have for the fighters, like you're not going to see guys boo when the fight goes to the ground type thing. Um, you must have felt very welcome competing over there. Yeah, um, the, the funniest thing was is everybody in the crowd was locals, Japanese. There was one guy... I just remember this. I wasn't really in the zone in that fight, and I ended up hitting the, my opponent with a couple of nut shots, and they sent him to the, a neutral corner. They take a point away, and I look over, and I hear this guy screaming, You can do it, Landon! And it's this Italian guy in a suit with a girl in each arm. I'm like, what? What the hell is going on? But, um, yeah, and it was just the only foreigner in the crowd. So it was like me and him and then the rest of everybody else in there was Japanese. And he was the only loud guy. It was actually pretty hilarious. Cool. Uh, it's definitely quite the experience. And, uh, you know, as far as, uh, you know, your training and stuff goes, you mentioned there you trained at Jackson Winkle, John. Uh, is fighting your full-time gig, if I'm hearing you correctly? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, haven't had an actual job in two and a half years now. I just, I train, I teach, do privates with some older fellas. Nice. Okay, good. Obviously making it work. Uh, that's, that's pretty good. And, uh, you know, I mentioned off the top there, uh, you're taking on Hayani uh, Barcelos for the featherweight title. Uh, is this your uh, first fight at uh, featherweight, correct? Yeah, uh, technically. Yeah, I was supposed to be back in August against Nick Lobosco and uh, he pulled out right before weigh-ins, so never got the chance to fight. And, and how has it uh, been adjusting to 145? Because I know, like I said, you, you haven't fought there for the majority of your career. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, the training's fine. Um, the weight's coming up fine. I just have a big weight cut the day of weigh-ins. You know, I'm cutting 15 pounds the day of weigh-ins. So other than that, everything else is normal. And you don't have to be strict on your diet or anything like that? Or are you a guy that kind of eats healthy in general? I, I'm pretty strict on my diet in camps regardless of what a weight I'm fighting at. So it's it's all the same. Good stuff. Much easier to, to go through a weight cut uh, when you're being, uh, you know, doing all the work ahead of time, as they say. Uh, what, what's sort of one thing you miss during your training camps that you can't eat that uh, you'd like to eat? Mm, no, nah, nothing in general. I pretty much eat, uh, you know, I, I have days where I can eat whatever I want, whatever oh, gotcha. I want. Oh, Okay, cheat days. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not the kind of guy that's like, oh, I have to eat clean all the time. You know, after practice, I'll have a box of Mike and Ike's and feel just fine about it. And with the fact this is a featherweight title fight, do you have to change your training at all to, to go for five rounds, or is that something you kind of train for in general? Yeah, the, the, really the only difference in training is just uh, adjusting to five rounds. You know, it's different energy systems. Um, it's not as high pace as a three-round fight. If you look at the pace, usually it's going to be a little bit lower. Um, so you have to adjust to those five rounds and, and how the flow of the fight's going to go. Absolutely. And uh, let's talk about the fight. Uh, you're taking on uh, Barcelos, like I said there. How do you think you match up against him? Uh, I think I match up great. I think he's uh, tailor made for me. Yeah, he's he's fast. Uh, he's got wrestling and, and grappling credentials, but I don't think they parlay into his MMA game that well. I think they're a little overrated for his MMA. Um, he's pretty predictable on the feet, and he's fast and explosive. But you know, I'm going to be the bigger, stronger guy. 
I'm in here sparring with guys like John Dotson and Cub Swanson and other flyweights that are the fastest in the planet, and I can keep up with them. So I'm not worried about his speed at all, nor his strength. So I think it matches up pretty well. And, and I was going to say, you know, you got kind of the all-star team there at uh, Jackson Winkle, John. Now, you mentioned Dodson and Swanson. Who are some other guys that you're training with on a regular basis? Uh, as far as big name goes, those two. Um, Cowboy, you know, we, we try to train together. Um, hmm. Yeah, as far as big names go, that's the main ones. Timor Valiev, the 135er from World Series of Fighting. Me and him get rounds in a lot. Uh, Diego awesome. Sanchez was always fun. And... Uh, <laughs> Um, yeah, a lot of other up and coming guys as well. Well, l- let me ask you that, you know, cause this is a good opportunity to kind of uh, pump up your gym here. You know, who are some guys that we should be keeping an eye on at Jackson Winkle, John, that are kind of moving up the ranks, obviously aside from yourself. Uh, the number one guy I'd say right now, well, a few guys, Tom, du- uh, Tom Dukenwa, the Bama 145 champ, uh, okay. Timur Valiev, who's, you know, one of the top contenders in World Series 135. Uh, my good friend Nick Urso, he just fought this past weekend, had a terrible call, hit the guy. Uh, the guy was squirming while Ert Nick was on his back. Uh, it ended up hitting him in the back of the head. The ref immediately stopped it, first warning, took a point away, and then the guy broke. You know, he's mentally broken, gave up. And uh, But he's like 9-1 and one right now, 9-2, and two, and he's one of the best guys in the gym without a doubt. Um, Jordan Wright coming out of the Beverly Hills Ninja coming out of California. And the list goes on. But. I was, I was going to say, good good uh, scouting report there, if I, if I must say. Um, but let's talk about your fight here. March 4th, uh, i got to get a prediction here. How do you see this fight ending? Um, but everything goes well. I, I think I'll knock him out in the first. I don't think it'll go more than three rounds. I think he's uh, mentally weak, and I think I'll break him pretty quickly. He likes to be the bully. He's the guy who's always been better. You know, He's been doing what he's doing since he was a little kid. He's always been better. And I'll watch his fights when he starts the scales start tipping, you know, in the other guy's favor, he starts to break a little bit. And if he doesn't rally back, he breaks. So I think I'll break him if I don't knock him out quick. And I was just going to say, you brought up a good point, which kind of transitions to my next question here. I know you're a guy who's really big into meditation and, and all that stuff, visualization and all that. Has that been something that's kind of always been part of uh, part of you, or is this something you've recently gotten into? Um, I'd say the last three or four years. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't definitely wasn't always. I used to be, uh, you know, the annoying, douchey little kid in high school. <laughs> uh, yeah, it definitely changed my life when I came out here to Jackson Wink. Um, but yeah, definitely bringing meditation. Not so much visualization, not a fan of it. Um, but meditation and just that, that kind of Eastern philosophy. Did, uh, did, Diego, did Diego Sanchez rub off on you in, in that regard? Because I know he's very big into that himself. He is. He, he takes it a little, I uh, take a step further than myself. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, he's got... And it's just a blast when he's around the gym. Good stuff. But uh, as far as meditation goes, not nah, he's going to definitely a little deeper into it than I am. Cool. And, and, you know, how, how important do you think it is uh, for a fighter to, uh, you know, be able to meditate and kind of separate themselves from, you know, the fighter and, and you know, outside the cage? I think it's epic. I think it's of epic importance. Um, and, and not even just to separate things, but I mean, one of the biggest things I see is, People stress about fights too much. They're always thinking about the fight too much. You know, it's eight weeks out, seven weeks out, and they can't stop thinking about the fight. They get stressed out. Um, meditation just helps you kind of just stay present in the moment. Obviously, those thoughts still seep into your head, but you're not sitting here thinking, oh, man, I've got to fight this guy in eight weeks. No, you're just going through the process and uh, working up towards it, and then when the fight comes, then you think about it. And that fight is going to come March 4th, live on Access TV, RFA 36. Everyone has to go check it out. Landon, I want to thank you so much for joining me here on the program. Just remind my audience where they can find you on social media and give any thank yous or shout outs. The floor is yours. Uh, Twitter, Instagram. You can hit me up at Groovy Lando. And then as far as shout outs go, I mean, on it, my main sponsor, um, and then my parents, mother main sponsor, you know, the support system strong there. And then just everybody over here at the gym, man, you know, they all know who they are. And they all know I love them.